Without thinking too much, I use the second rail of my bench power supply to provide the trigger voltage to the thyristor. The effect was a spark and a loud noise. When the smoke disappeared, I saw that I killed the second part of my bench power supply. Since then it shows 50 volts and overcurrent, and I cannot change that anymore. Today we will try to repair it and have to learn how such a thing works. Will I be successful? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. So I got from a few viewers the information about this uh, model PS2403 Pro. This is this model from Voltcraft and uh, this is diagram, two pages and I already took all the screws off that we can open it. And this is really old school. If we look into it, a lot of air and a huge trafo with plenty of wiring. We have two very similar PCBs and here two other PCBs. And if you look at the diagram, we see here number one and here same as channel A. So this is channel A and this is obviously channel B. And uh, the one channel still works and the other channel does not work at all. I have a third channel which is quite fixed. It has a special diagram like this one here and it uh, works with an integrated circuit. So the error or the defect must be somewhere here I assume because this works. And now if we search for, a, for an error we can compare voltages here and here. The error here is twofold. One, it shows only, it shows always about 60 volts and the overcurrent protection always is on. Now the first question is, where is the logic? Is it more here or is it more on this board? Because then I have to take out this one or this one. This is much more complicated, I think, than this one. But also if we look here, it has quite a lot of wires here. So also take this one out is probably not uh, simple. The power transistor seems to be here and here is the cooling. So if the power transistor is uh, killed, then it's definitely here because I have no power, uh, uh, no high power devices here because there is no cooling around here. First, I hope that uh, not uh, this beefy transistor is defective, maybe here an op-amp or something. I found an article in the internet where they say that if this happens, the op-amp here is defective. And this is the op-amp here. For voltage regulation, here are the, the two potentiometers, the coarse and the fine for voltage. And here is the potentiometer for current. So I assume this is the current regulator and here we have the overcurrent protection diode. So it is well possible that this, that this um, op-amp is defective, maybe even more. So I have first to search for this op-amp. There is an integrated circuit on this board and there is an integrated circuit on this board. Both have six pins and uh, this Dual op-amp here also has uh, six pins. It is an LM1458. This is a real old-fashioned box here and you see I hope I can even take apart this front panel here or take away this front panel here and then I should the access should be easier. Now it's easier to remove these screws here. Let's stop now and try to understand how this linear power supply works. I already did an introductory video about power supplies where we distinguished between linear and switching regulators. Maybe you want to watch this one too. Relevant for today is that good bench power supplies are linear because this type creates much less electrical noise, which is essential if you work with analog circuits. 
Linear power supplies cost more and are also much bigger than their switching sisters. This one definitely is linear and consists, like all linear supplies, of a few building blocks. The first one was obvious when we opened the case, the transformer. It has 220 volt input and creates many different secondary voltages. Notable in this respect is that these voltages are entirely isolated from each other. Noteworthy is also that transformers have high efficiency and therefore do not create a lot of heat. One of these secondary windings is connected through switches to a full bridge rectifier. These devices fold the negative half wave in between the positive one. If we add a capacitor, we get DC at a certain voltage level. Because we need a variable voltage for our experiments, we have to destroy some of the voltage. This is done by a variable resistor in the form of power transistors. Like that, we get a lower voltage at our load. But we do not only need a lower voltage, we also want it to be constant if we change our load. To achieve that, we add a controller which measures the voltage at the banana plug and compare it with the requested voltage. In my power supply, the requested voltage is determined by two potentiometers, a coarse and a fine one. If there is a difference between the requested and the supplied voltage, the signal to the power transistors is adjusted until there is no difference anymore. Very efficient. Now we can create a variable but stable voltage at our output pins. Exactly what we needed. Unfortunately, there is a problem left. Heat. This power supply can supply 30 volts and 3 ampere maximum. So the voltage here has to be higher than 30 volts. Let's assume 50 volts. What happens if we power a 5 volt device which needs the 3 ampere? The power transistors have to destroy 50 minus 5 volts equals 45 volts times the 3 ampere equals 135 watts, which is quite a lot. And our power supply would get really hot. So clever engineers solved this problem with a trick. They added more secondary windings. Now, if we need less than 7 volts, we use the first tap of the winding to generate 15 volts. Our power transistor only has to dissipate 10 volts times 3 ampere equals 30 watts. If we need more than 8 but less than 20 volts, we choose the tap which creates 30 volts. And only if we need more, we use the 50 volt tap. Very clever idea to keep the power dissipation down. Unfortunately at a cost. We need a second controller which does the switching of these relays. You start to understand why these devices are quite valuable and you understand why I would be happy if I can fix it. We will keep this block diagram handy for the next steps. I see something here. The R107 seems burnt. The, so something definitely happened here. What do we know? At the output we measure nearly 60 volts, our R107 is burned and posts on the internet suggest that the op amp is the weakest point of this power supply. Maybe R107 helps to find the problem. If we have 60 volts on the positive and follow the traces, we see that R107 together with a few other resistors is connected between plus and ground. PT101 and PT102 can become nearly zero if we turn them to the left limit. And R107 is only 470 ohms. Power equals voltage square divided by resistor equals 360 divided by 470 ohms. This poor resistor only supports a quarter watt. So he had to give up. He was not the reason he was only collateral damage. But where do these 60 volts at the output come from? Apparently from the transformer via the power resistors. So the power resistors have to be fully open, which can have two causes. Either they get a big base current from the controller 
or they are damaged to create an internal short. Unfortunately, it is not easy to distinguish the two cases, because it is simpler to change the op-amp and because the posts suggest it is easily destroyed, I try to change this one first. And definitely here is IC102. And here is IC102A and IC102B. It's really black because I do not know the codes, the color codes of these new resistors by heart. I always check before I use one with this simple transistor tester. And now I do something most people uh, might not understand, but I have an old toothbrush and a little bit of alcohol and now I clean up the, f the flux. And with paper. So not too bad. Now I powered the whole thing up and it still shows 58 volts here. So it definitely something else is defective. No difference to before. Unfortunately, this uh, op amp has no socket, so I have to desolder the whole chip and then resolder a new one. By the way, I marked the first point, the first measuring point with a red dot here, and pin number one of the op amp here that I have an idea where to measure. Now, this is out. It is a normal LM. 1478 and I ordered now one in a local store and um, I can get one but first I check if this op amp works because these op amps usually work at plus minus 12 volt or so I built once a power supply with minus and plus 12 volt a very simple thing you see here I had to remove this protection I had to remove the whole cooler here and everything like that because this bloody power transistor is right here at the really complicated place now I was able to take it out it is a 2N37 73 power transistor which is good for more than 100 volt and I think about uh, 16 amp. Now how can we check whether such a transistor still works? The first thing is we have to find the diagram and we see that the base is number one and the emitter is number two and we see here that there should be a diode between the base and the emitter. Now let's check if we have here a diode. Zero ohm in this direction and zero ohm in the other direction. So this is not exactly a diode. Now of course I went and bought a new transistor 2N3773. Now let's check here. Half a volt and the other way around, a complete isolation. So definitely this one works and this one is defective. So I really hope if I replace this one with this one that the power supply works again. Now one word to power, t to power transistors because they dissipate lots of of heat we have to apply a little bit of thermal paste to get the heat dissipated into this heat sink here. I will not film how I replace it and uh, then I will continue with the test at the end.
by the way, it does not have only this huge heatsink here. It has even an additional heatsink directly on, on, the, on the transistor. So you see there is a lot of power dissipated in these linear power supplies. And now the big moment. We have to watch this instrument here, whether this is still around 60 volt or maybe 20 volt or 15 volt or something like that. Or if the whole thing explodes. Still 60 volts. And now, sometimes later, I also replaced the second power transistor. Now let's check if this was helpful. The big moment again. It should show us about maybe 15 volt. Oh, 20 volt. It works very good. The CC lamp is off and I can change the voltage. And listen to the relay. First switch, second switch, third switch. Now this one goes up to 43 volt. Much higher than before. Now this can be considered as a success. It uh, only costed a few dollars for the new transistors and of course some work, but also we learned something about these beautiful linear bench power supplies. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, consider supporting the channel. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.